What is going on guys welcome back in this video we're going to build a simple countdown timer for windows in python so we're going to have a graphical user interface we're going to be able to enter some time then it's going to count down and then it's going to play an alarm sound or show a notification so it's going to look like that let me switch here to the example i have prepared this already and if i run this you will see in a second this graphical user interface here based on tk inter and in here i can just pass uh, 80,000 seconds, for example. Now this would be 22 hours, 13 minutes and some seconds. I can stop this. I can also provide a format like this. So seven hours, for example, uh, 10 minutes and 22 seconds start. Um, I can do this with one minute here like that. And I can also do this with one minute here like that. So it's parsing correctly. And if I enter something like two seconds, for example, it's just going to count down once it's done we're going to get this countdown timer time is up notification down here on the right. And alternatively, you can also play a sound if you want to, I'm going to show you how. Now keep in mind that this notification down here is Windows specific, everything else works on Linux as well. But if you want to have this pop up notification, you got to use the Windows 10 library. Uh, besides that, it's platform independent, but in the title, it says probably it says Windows because this is a Windows feature. So First thing we want to do is we want to go to CMD or the terminal of choice. But since this is a Windows video, we're going to probably use CMD and we're going to say pip install win 10 toast. This is the thing that we need for the toast notification that we saw. Uh, and what you can also use alternatively, I think this is platform independent. I'm not sure though. It's the play sound module. This is what you can use to play an MP3 file, for example, of an alarm clock sound. So those are the two libraries. The second one is optional. The first one is actually also optional. You just need some way to to tell uh, the user that the countdown is now over. You have to play a sound. You can also use Pi Audio, but the installation is quite a hassle. So I didn't want to use uh, Pi Audio in this video. And once we have that, we're going to import threading. We're going to import time. We're going to import uh, TK inter as TK. And we're going to also say from win 10 toast import the toast notifier. And of course, if you choose to use play sound from play sound, play sound, import play sound like that, I'm going to comment that out because I'm not going to use it really, I'm just going to show it to you uh, briefly. And what we want to do now is we want to create a class for this countdown timer because uh, when we're working with UI elements, oftentimes we define these elements, we create a button, we create a label, and then we have functions and a button has to be able to access a function because that's what you, uh, you, you want to set the command of the button to the function, but then the function has to access the UI elements and then everything gets messy. And sometimes uh, you cannot even do it. So in an object, you can just refer to the self object and this makes things much easier. So we're going to start by saying class count down timer. And the init function is going to be quite simple. Uh, now it's not going to be short necessarily, but quite simple, we're going to define a root object. So self dot uh, root is going to be tk dot tk like that. And then we're going to say self dot root dot geometry. Uh, you can design this however you want for the thing I prepared, I used 460 times 220. This is what you saw in the demonstration and then self dot root dot title. Uh, it's going to be just countdown timer like that. Now we're going to add some UI elements. We had this one entry box, we had two buttons and we had a label with the time. So we're going to say self dot time entry is going to be TK entry. And here we're going to pass self dot root as a parent, we're going to pass um, as a font Helvetica 30, I think. And then self dot time entry is going to be placed in a grid layout. Uh, the row is going to be zero, the column is going to be zero, and the column span is going to be two. And we're going to have a padding x and a padding uh, y of five. Just for the layout, because otherwise, we're going to have no spaces in between the elements. And now we're going to say self dot start button. So very, very simple UI stuff here. I have a TK inter tutorial if this is completely new to you. 
So uh, self.start button is going to be tk.button. It's going to be part of self root. It's going to have the same font actually. So we're going to say self, uh, no, we're going to say font equals again, Helvetica 30 like that. The text of the button is going to be start and the command of the button is going to refer to self dot start thread. We're going to define that function. We don't have it yet. Now, why start thread? Because if you don't run this in a thread, the time dot sleep function will block it, uh, will block the main thread and you will not be able to uh, work with the UI, you will not be able to press buttons while the countdown is uh, while the countdown is running because it's going to have one thread for everything. And even though Python doesn't support actual multi-threading when it's I/O bound, it does support it to some degree because it's not locking the interpreter necessarily. Um, so we're going to have to run this in an extra thread. And we're going to say self dot start button dot grid. The row is going to be this time one. The column is going to be still zero. And the padding is going to be again, five and five. We're going to copy that we're going to paste it, we're going to replace this with stop. And we're going to change also the text to stop. And this is going to also uh, actually we don't need the threat, we're just going to call the stop function that we don't have yet. Um, and of course, this is going to be in column two. And last but not least, we need the label with the time. So time label is going to be TK dot label. And this label is going to be also part of self root, it's going to have the font like everyone else. So like this. And a text the default text is going to be time colon zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero like that. And then self dot time label dot grid. It's going to be a row two, the last row column. Oh, by the way, this should be one, right? Yeah. Column zero and column span is going to be two padding x padding y is five. There you go. And we're going to have one uh, variable here that is going to be important for the uh, for the countdown because when we count down in a separate thread, we won't uh, we want to be able to stop this, but we cannot just say thread dot stop that doesn't work. We need to have some uh, loop condition that we can change. And for this, we're going to say stop loop equals false by default, we're going to be able to change that. And then we're going to run the main loop for the GUI. Now we need to define the functions actually the start uh, threat and the stop function are quite simple. The start threat function is just going to start the start function. And actually everything is going to be in the start function. So we're going to have start threat. And this is going to be part of self obviously. And we're going to create a new thread here with a target self dot start, we don't have the function yet. And then we're going to just say t start like that. Def start is going to be the function here. I'm going to pass for now. And stop is actually, I think only going to reset stuff. And uh, we're going to set stop loop obviously to true. And we're going to say self dot time label config. And it's going to set the text to the default text of zero, 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 zero. So everything else will be in the start function, the whole countdown logic will be in the start function. It's not that complicated. First of all, whenever we start, we want to make sure that stop loop will be set to false again, because once we have stopped, now when we create the object, it's false, but when we stop, it's true, and we need to set it to false again in order to get started. And then we're just going to say hours, minutes and seconds is going to be zero, zero, zero by default. And we're going to then say the string split is uh, going to be whatever is the content of this time entry here. And we're going to split that on the colons. So if you provide an invalid format, you're going to uh, get an exception, obviously here. So what we want to do is we want to say self dot time entry dot get and we're going to split what we get here on colons. And then we're going to say if the length of this split 
is three. This means that we have provided as user, uh, as users, we have provided the hours, the minutes and the seconds. If that is the case, we're just gonna um, assign these. So hours is going to be um, string split zero, then minutes is going to be one and seconds. Oh, come on. Seconds is going to be two. And now the same thing, elif, the length is not three, but two. We're just going to do the same thing for the minutes. Uh, but with zero and one. And if the length is one, we're just going to do the seconds with zero. And otherwise, this is going to be <clears throat> an invalid format. So we're going to say print invalid time format return. All right. So this is just parsing the string. And now what we have to do is we have to start this loop. And the loop is going to be uh, first of all, we need to calculate the full seconds because based on the full seconds, we're going to determine uh, how much longer we go because we need one variable that we can just decrease by one all the time. And then we can uh, do some calculations to display hours and minutes correctly. So we want to say full seconds is going to be hours times 3600 plus minutes times 60. Now, this is obviously just 60 times 60 and plus seconds. And then we're going to start a loop. And this loop is going to be while full seconds is larger than one, or actually larger than zero, greater than zero, and not stop loop. So self dot stop loop, we're going to run this loop where we basically say full seconds minus equals one. So we're going to just decrease by one second. And then we're going to calculate the minutes and the hours based on the seconds. So the minutes and the seconds is going to be the result of diff mod, which is going to give us uh, the result of the division and uh, the remainder here as minutes and seconds of the full seconds by 60. And then if the minutes are over 60, so if we have more than 60 minutes, we're going to say hours, minutes, diff mod, minutes 60. And of course, if we don't have that, we're going to just end up with zero and the remainder is going to be minutes. So nothing happens. Actually, we don't need to check for that. And then all we need to do is we need to format that. So the time label is going to be set to text being equal to an F string time and the format is going to be hours. And we need to specify here colon zero to D in order to make sure that we have leading zeros. If we have, for example, five seconds, it's still going to be displayed uh, as zero five, then colon, then minutes and seconds as well like that. So hours zero to D minutes zero to D second zero to D. That is the string, then we need to say self dot root update so that we see the changes. And then we need to say time sleep one. And that is actually it. That is actually it. Um, the only thing that is missing now is what happens when the time is over. So when the time is over, uh, we get out of the loop. And we want to make sure that we get out of the loop, not because of the self stop loop, but because uh, the time uh, passed because we don't want to uh, get a notification or an alarm sound. If we press stop, we don't want to do that. We only want to get it if the loop ended because the full seconds went to zero. And if that is the case, so if not self uh, self dot stop loop, if that is still not the case, but we're out of the loop, this means we're going to say toast equals toast notifier, we're going to create a toast notifier, and we're going to say toast dot show toast with the title countdown timer time is up. And the duration of the notification, you can choose it. I don't know, we can go with 10, 10 seconds. Let's add a space here. Now I think this is actually it. This is everything we only need to create now the actual um, countdown timer object to get started. 
Let's see. I'm going to run this now. And we should have the same program as before. So let's try with some number here like that. Okay, we have a problem. Uh, operand types not supported <clears throat> for integer and string. Why is that? I think I forgot. Yeah, I know what I forgot. Here, of course, we need to say int for all of those. Now I could actually write a vim macro, I think, but I don't want to waste your time in case I fail. So we're going to just do it manually here. Shouldn't be too complicated, though. It's basically just two operations. So I don't want to risk it, though. There you go. So now we have this now it should work. And if I provide something like that, you can see a countdown is started, I can also move uh, the window, this would not be the case. Or at least if I move it, the countdown would stop, you can see the countdown is still going. If it was not running in a separate thread, it would pause and let me do whatever I want to do. Then when I release, it will continue counting. Since it's running in a, in a separate thread, it works, we can stop this here, I can set this to two seconds, then I'm going to get the notification, there you go, I can end this. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to also show you now with the play sounds what you can do. Now, this is a one liner. So I'm not going to really talk about this. But if you want to use play sound and play some mp3 file, what you can do is you can go uh, to the toast notifications here. And you can basically say, play sound and your mp3 file. That's it alarm.mp3 the path, essentially, the problem with this is that uh, it's not going to stop. So you cannot stop it, it will play the full sound. So if you have a sound that's like 50 seconds, it's going to play that sound for 50 seconds, you're not going to be able to stop it. At least I didn't find a way uh, quickly to stop it. So I decided to not use it. But if your sound is like, I don't know, two seconds, you can use it. But usually what you want to have is you want to have a repeating sound un until you press stop. But I didn't figure out how to do this with play sound. However, this is what you can also do. I think this should also work on Linux, the toast notifier only works on Windows. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and